Well, the Zurich exhibition uh, uh, was based on um, drawings, usually for uh, any kind of work that I do, whether it's light work or other material generated work. I work on a kind of grid form. And I had never taken the, the grid form as the architectural housing of the work. So the con series in Zurich were based on the grid, but the grid dissected and opened up so that you would physically open up certain planes of the grid and make them three-dimensional in another way, very much like how an architect designs space, where you open up and it becomes a, uh, a three-dimensional space. Uh, first, I guess I should clear up the idea of calm series. I, had, I remember talking to Mr. Hausner and him saying, you know, we have to work with these, with these cons pieces on these con because basically the works were going to be in con. And they had nothing to basically to do with, uh, uh, with some other issue. But uh, how the pieces were actually designed, the cons pieces, were based on a, uh, a graft uh, plotting of different lighting shapes. But the graph began to be opened up so that different planes of the graph became three-dimensional. And that allowed the gestural drawing in the cons pieces to begin to open and close the picture plane in a very different way. And they were quite saturated in color and gesture too. So we created five pieces and uh, they were basically designed on the computer, which was a, a way that I have begun to design now. Uh, not that I'm computer trained, but that I will do a small drawing or croquis and then it's, um, it's reworked with the computer. And now we order our, our uh, products from the computer too. We don't do neon gesture so much and have it copied. We draw it on the computer and then it's uh, sent to the neon factory and blown up and, and fabricated that way. The other series of work, which was never really shown uh, never shown in America and never shown in, uh, in, uh, in Zurich are the elliptical pieces and these pieces were based on the last section of video work that I was investigating, the transmissional aspects of television. And we think of the solar system, of how the ellipse works in rotating planets around the sun, uh, how uh, an elliptical shape as opposed to a uh, circle or square shape as in golden section uh, becomes uh, more uh, atmospherically, uh, uh, you're aware more of an, uh, an aerial space when you think of an elliptical space in terms of uh, transmission, as I said, and broadcasting in these kind of areas. And I had used glass before with light, and I wanted to use glass in its simplest form. And this small series of work was based on other works that were in investigating the elliptical shape and transmission. Uh, so there are two works from this series, and then two other series are in the selected works. Um, a series of work uh, that I made uh, in America are freestanding light works. And I was trying to, since I do have an anthropological background and I was very interested in observing uh, the structure of uh, animals in bones and also the, uh, an attempt to try to understand the aspect of stance, of how, how we stand, how we move, and these particular pieces, the herd series they're called, one of which was shown in Zurich called Buffalo, were really based on studying the stance of animals, the stance of man, is 
is sculpture now on four legs or on two legs or on one leg. And that's how this series began to be developed. And I had never made light pieces without the support of architecture. So they were freestanding. So again, technology has to be employed. New housing for the light, uh, new uh, ways to support and direct it, and uh, ended up making a very interesting series of this work that are based on these principles. The last series of work, which I'm still very much working on, are the light uh, pieces that go in architecture, and they were loosely called chandelier works because they could be on the ceiling. And they, again, come from an early use in trying to alter my existing ceiling lighting to ending up making huge works that uh, began to develop some of the earlier ideas about spiraling in space. What is it like to see a tornado? In fact, some of the pieces of the later chandeliers are based on one series is called Twister, uh, Another series is called Luster, which is the English word for a chandelier, really, which was developed, I think, in the 18th century and began to be employed always in architecture. So the interesting thing is these works were always thought of as ceiling, and then I began to have them be on other surfaces in architecture. And now I'm trying to think of them in terms of larger spirals of light that you might be able to walk through. And, of course, there you would need an architectural housing to support these kinds of principles.